Good morning. Hope you're having a great day. This week's Torah portion is Bahar Bihu Koisai, where we learn about the laws of Shemitah, the sabbatical year that takes place every seven years in the land of Israel, where the land would rest, all agriculture would stop. And then they would count seven times seven. And on the 40, after the seven cycles of the sabbatical year, they would have what would be the Jubilee year, the Yovel year. And as we know on the Liberty Bell where it says, Liberty shall be proclaimed throughout the land to, on, to all its inhabitants, which comes from this week's Torah portion, where the idea was that whatever you owned, whatever you bought from someone, was only a temporary buying. It could last till the Jubilee year, but once the Jubilee year came, everything returned to its owner. And of course, what's the message to us? What is the Shemitah year? What does the Jubilee year teach us? And the answer is that at the end of the day, we don't take the things we acquire in this world with us. They don't stay with us forever. And what the Torah is trying to remind us with the Jubilee year is that hey, this is to give you perspective. The sabbatical year makes you rest every seven years and let everyone take your fruit. The jubilee year makes you return the land to its owners because ultimately what you acquire is not physical and monetary things. What you acquire in this world is your values, is your name, is your good deeds, is the Torah, is the mitzvot, is the kind things you do. You know, yesterday, in Omaha, Nebraska, was the Berkshires Hathaway's shareholders conference event that takes place once a year and it's very celebrated because there's two very famous people. One of course is Warren Buffett, who at 92 years old, one of the most successful investors ever. And then you have Charlie Munger, who's 99 years old. And together with Warren Buffett, they've been investing and have grown Berkshire's Hathaway is this remarkable thing. And why do people celebrate them? They celebrate them because of their financial success, their acquisitions, their growth. But I want to tell you about another 90-something-year-old guy. And this 96-year-old guy, Mr. Cohn, is a Ukrainian man who was born 96 years ago in Ukraine. He fought in the Partisan, 1941, 1942, 1943. And then he joined the Red Army to fly planes and to fight against the Nazis. He was shot down from his plane in 1944 and ended up in a concentration camp where he was liberated in 1945. He moved to Toronto. And the last few years, only in the last five, six years, he's become close to the Chabad Russian Center in Toronto, Rabbi Zaltzman. And last week, Rabbi Zaltzman's son had a baby boy about 10 days ago and this man Mr. Cohn came to Rabbi Zaltzman and he says you know I see that your grandson is having a bris on his eighth day I never had a bris I would like to have a bris Rabbi Zaltzman says to him first you have to ask your doctor are you able to and he went to see his doctor and his doctor said yes he's able to he's healthy enough to have a bris and lo and behold, last week in Toronto, the eight-day-old baby of Rabbi Zaltzman had a bris. A 96-year-old hero came, Mr. Cohn, Martin Cohn, came dressed with his medallions, with his Red Army jacket, with all the things that he got, all the awards that he got, and he had a bris miller. And what was the name that he took upon himself? He said, I want to have the name Avraham, like the first Jew who had a bris at 99 year old. And I don't know if since Avraham, 3,500 years ago, had a bris at 99, was there another 96 year old who had, a, who had ever had a bris? So the thing is like this, Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett have acquired so much wealth, but what are they gonna take with them? I'm sure they did good things and they were kind and those things will go. But a guy like Mr. Cohen, who fought in the partisans, who fought the Nazis, and at 96 years old, he had the courage to say, I want to join the covenant that Abraham made with God 3,500 years ago. 
Let us remember the Shemitah year, the sabbatical year teaches us that nothing belongs to us. Everything is alone. The only thing belongs to us is the things we've given, the impact we've had, and the accomplishments we've made. Have yourself an awesome week.